maybe it's the nostalgia for a necessity of the past now turned more craft. Or something as simple as the clickety-clack of creativity coming to life. Actor Tom Hanks boasts a hearty collection. And TikTok users are buzzing with excitement for the typewriter. It's the sensory feedback that they get from a typewriter that they don't get off a laptop or a keyboard. Tom Fiore is a rare breed among the remaining owners of a typewriter shop, which makes him and his store, Cambridge Typewriter, very popular these days. When the lockdown started and everybody was trapped at home, it just went up 10 notches. So I'm selling machines out in the sidewalk, people sitting on the bench, and they're in the window pointing to the guy, can I try this one, that one, and I'd bring them out, and, and I got just crazy busy. Sales and service in his small Arlington storefront, a jungle gym of ink ribbons and keys, up more than 40% over last year. But it's a blaze of sales that was sparked two decades ago, at a time when computers threatened to close up Fiore's now four-decade-old business. Right around 2001, 2002, people started coming in asking about vintage manual typewriters. And right away, this, this bell went off my head, you know, this, this might be it. <laughs> this, is, this might be what I'm going to be doing for the, the next 20 or 30 years. His first love, repairing those tools once used in everyday life, an intimate craft between man and machine. And this voice in my head said, this is it, this is what you're going to be doing. It was beautiful. He still mingles in the fix, but now has an equal passion for collecting for customers. That's one of the oldest things in here. That, that's an original Hammond number no. one from 1884. Can I touch it? Sure. Oh, yes. Fiore shelves are filled with relics ranging from the 1920 versions to the 1970s. It's hard to keep any of them in stock thanks to 2020, the year of at home everything. Fun typing, I call. People were doing creative writing at home, journaling, diaries poetry. Fiore says the right typewriter comes down to the right feel. Think of it like test driving a car. Two to three week learning curve to transition from a keyboard to a typewriter. Ooh, but he says that. the heart of a writer, or rather the fingers, Ooh, yes, I like this. often know instinctually how to dance on the keys. Typewriters make what you write better because of the way your brain runs and thinks and the action rhythm of the typewriter, they go together. Inside this small shed in Jamaica Plain, a synchronized performance of letters, slugs, and molten metal, a two-ton machine working in concert with man, this man. Michael Babcock. Letterpress is a relief form of printing where the face of the type is inked and then impressed into paper, letter press. I passionately love type. The possibilities for recombining and designing and making beautiful stuff is really appealing. You could say that the engine in that process is this 75-year-old Linotype Model 31 the only machine of its kind in eastern Massachusetts, outside of a museum, and few craftsmen even understand how to turn it on, much less use it. I am an expert, such as it is, I mean, me and five other people. It wasn't always that way. 50 years ago, these machines were plentiful, filling the floors of publishing houses and newspapers alike. Newspapers until the 1970s, book manufacturing into the 1970s, early 80s. It's what Gutenberg was famous for. There's no denying Babcock's affection for the printed word. Do you have a favorite letter? No. They're all good. As you watch his mesmerizing movement print its way through the room and onto these New Year greeting cards, you begin to wonder why he keeps this niche business alive. You don't have to have one of these. You don't even have to have any type. You can have your computer and you can buy a plate maker. By dint of dent, it's letterpress. But it's not the true process. His customers today include soon-to-be newlyweds, poets, musicians enamored of the ornamental and distinguished look and feel of 
in printed letters. For Babcock, perhaps it's the challenge of meticulous work that keeps him going. There's certainly something very satisfying when the galley is full of cast lines and I take it inside and I proof it and I don't find any typos. Or the knowledge that though he owns shelves of typeface and matrices molded with ampersands, diphthongs, and pounds sterling, he is one of the few keeping a machine like this and printing history alive. <laughs> Babcock says the future of the linotype is so precarious that if certain parts of the machine were to break, replacement parts are no longer available to purchase. He uses interrobang presses, which are named after the interrobang, an unconventional punctuation mark used in various written languages and intended to combine the question mark and the exclamation mark. Coming up, before he could run, he could roller skate.